Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. And it's cold, but it's dry, and it's not too windy. But I am not alone. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, yeah, again. So I forgot to give Simon a microphone. Oh, my microphone. So, Where is my, but, my, uh, my, but you can hear me, no? Hopefully yeah. you can hear him. But uh, anyway, I'm going to keep this short. We're back out on the field that produced a potential Roman Cistercius from the first century, second century, and also a Roman silver denarius of the Emperor Hadrian. Um, as ever, Simon on the Equinox 800, the Spanish detectorist, his channel's doing very well, and, um, <laughs> and me on the XP Deus 2. So that's it. Let's go and see what treasures we can find. Let's go for the Aereus, no, today, not the Nari. The what? Aereus. What's an Aereus? Aereus is the Roman gold. Oh, an Aureus. Aureus, yeah. Well, your Latin <laughs> has to improve a little bit. I've been studying Latin, so... All right, OK. Show off. Right, let's go. Yeah. 80, 81. What have we got in the first hole in the first minute? Something deeper. It's getting to that time of year, all the fields are being ploughed. And the farmer's going to be planting probably in another week or two, maybe three or four at a push if the weather isn't great. And then I'm going to be struggling for permissions. Well, there's a first target. It's green. And it's... a thing. Don't know what that is. But at least it's not aluminium. So yeah, we're just making the most of the land before a lot of it becomes unavailable. So let's see if we can get anything better. We have something blue. Oh, is it plastic? Oh, it is. I thought we had a glass bead. <laughs> oh well. At this time we do have an eyes only find. It's a little slate pencil. It's broken. But that's probably going to be Victorian 18 into the early 1900s. Nice wee find. I think that's three I've had off this field now. Mystery object number one. It was an 80. It's pretty shallow again. Is that hollow? Yet it is. Hmm. Interesting. You can almost see bits of colour coming through on the end there. It almost looks a bit purpley. What is it? Just a wee gentle dab. Right, I'll give it a wee clean up with a cloth and get back to you. Well, what do you reckon? First mystery object in the first 10 minutes. I don't know. Don't know if it's got any age to it or not. It's an unusual sort of shape. It does look like it's got a sort of a bluey, purpley sort of tinge to it on the end there. But, I don't know. Could be any age, really. So I'm going to have to rely on you. If you know, comment below. Another one worthy of filming? Maybe. A bit jittery. 83. Stopped in and saw the farmer. Well, in fact, the farmer's wife. I left my uh, silver denarius and my possible Cistercius and also the beautiful George the Third shilling that I got with them to have a look at and show their friends. Told them a little bit of the story behind it all. Always good to keep in with the landowners. So that's a little, it's a little agricultural bit, I think. A tap, some sort of tap. Oh well, junk. Oh, and also some of you were saying there was a bit of a, a drop in the audio since I've got this new microphone. So I have changed the audio settings, pumped the decibels up a little bit, and hopefully that'll help. So do let me know. And I'm not being shot at, it's a bird scarer. This is a screamer. 91, 92, Georgian, bottle top, silver, or junk. I can see something big and round right there. And that is a thing. What have we got? 
It's a great big, it's a great big cap, but it does look like there's some writing on it. So let's see what we've got. It is Gibbs Dentifrice, which I think is like a dental powder, an early form of toothpaste. Probably going to be from around the turn of the century, 19, early 19 to middle of the 1900s, I'm guessing. Turning a little bit breezier and a little bit colder because we've come over the brow of the hill. Just got this here. It was a very faint, low 90s. Very deep, about 12, 13 inches down. I'm going by that big spike. I'm assuming it's been hammered into wood or maybe even leather at some point. Don't know what it is though. In the words of Simon, here's some quality trash. It's a bottle top. Zoom in a wee touch. And you'll see it says yeast vite. A yeast vite. So it's obviously off a little glass bottle. Maybe oh. some sort of medicine or some sort of lotion or potion or maybe even some sort of yeast for making bread. Who knows? Yeah, but it's a it's thing. It's nice, no? <laughs> well, nice, nice trash. <laughs> nice trash. I've had quite a few pieces of doors, hinges and things like that. And now we've got a little lock. That's, uh, that's about as good as it's got so far, unfortunately, for me. Simon's got a couple of buttons, but... <laughs> Slim pickings. <laughs> this was an ear blower. Um, to be honest, I expected aluminium, but it's it's copper or brass, and it's a solid piece, very heavy, weighs a few ounces. Don't know if that's maybe some kind of weight. Can't see any stamps on it. Um, don't know. Maybe it's broken off or something there, but it's very smooth. It looks like it's always been like this, and I do wonder if it's a little a little weight for scales. But let me know in the comments below. Date-wise, hard to say really. Could be a Victorian, could be earlier, could be slightly later. Oh, well, is there maybe actually a number five on top? Well, there might be a letter on there. Or is that just the way it's corroded? No, I think that's just the way it's corroded. So, um, yeah, if you know, comment below. Another one worthy of filming. I think I've said that 35 times already. And every one of them turns out to be junk or bottle tops, but low 90s, high 80s. And not massively shallow. Eh, uh, sorry, not massively deep even. 87 now. And I think we've got more aluminium, I don't believe it. Oh, it is. What a shocker I'm having so far. Oh well. I'm getting fed up filming uh, live digs that turn out to be junk. This is an 86, 87. Come on, please, a coin. Well, there's a big piece of copper. And that is a thing. Well, it's maybe part of a vessel. Yeah, it could be. Hmm. Well, I think, possibly, let me zoom you in a touch. There's the gunfire going off again, the bird scarer. Possibly a tankard? A bit of a tankard? What do you reckon? But, uh, well, not particularly old. A couple of hundred years, maybe. But if you think it's something else, then let me know in the comments below. At last, I found something. It is a horse decoration made of lead. Unfortunately, it is broken. It's not too dissimilar from other types that we've found, although they've normally got a rope decorated edge around the outside. And it's very rough on the back because it would have been mounted against leather. But probably date-wise, 1700s, maybe into the 1800s, but certainly I think it's going to be at least a couple of hundred years old. The early ones were lead, the later ones were brass and copper. So it's a find, albeit half a one. Got another eyes only find, I believe. I believe. Um, I haven't picked it up yet. So I'm always told apparently when I say, can you see what I can see, that I always put the object right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> so I'm trying to work on that a wee bit. Anything obvious there to you? No? Maybe? 
Well, it's right down here. I think we might have another carbon pencil. And we do. So there you are, carbon pencil number two, and I think that's I think that's four, maybe even five that I've had off this field. There's another one that's broken, but I think this would have been used for writing on slate. So again, probably 18, early 1900s. Well, they were clearly literate around these parts, and they were clearly good at losing their pencils. Now this one, Screamer of an 86, and I believe it's right on the surface. Possibly a razor. Uh, uh, maybe not a razor. What on earth is that? It's very decorative, whatever it is. That's for sure. Possibly a furniture finial. Maybe. It's got a thread on the top, so maybe it is a razor blade. An old fashioned razor handle. And the screw on part of the top is missing. Generally, they've just got straight lines on them. But that is incredibly intricately decorated. Oh, the camera cut out there for some reason. But uh, yeah, where was I? A um, hundred plus years? But I'm going to have to see what you all think. Very elaborate, uh, elaborately decorated. My face is that cold, I'm struggling to talk. So, let me know in the comments below. Woohoo! My first doorknob of the day. So that's that one ticked off. All I need now is a bit of cutlery. At last, I've got a coin. Oh, my glove's blown away. I just shouted back to Simon. I was actually looking behind me when I got the signal, so I didn't spot it. Uh, I'm sure you've all spotted it. Right on the surface. Uh, and I said to him, well, we go over to the tree, the tree where he found the, the love token, which is uh, this big one here. Um, so we're going to have lunch under there. And uh, on the way, we've got a coin right on the surface. Oh. Right on the surface. You don't need the metal detector. Well, I did because I didn't see it. I was, I was too busy looking at you. Uh, I think it's George. Oh, you it George, is. George's five again. Yeah, George the fifth. Good old gorgeous George. <laughs> All right, I'll give this a wee clean up and get back to you. Yes, at last. I feel that when you get a coin, it kind of helps to make the day. So you'll just make out wee George coming in there from uh, the fade through. And uh, he ruled 1910 to 36. And we can get a date off of this one on the reverse. At the very bottom, I can just see 1920. So just two years after the end of the Great War. Nice to see you, George. Thanks for stopping by. And here he is, the chocolate bun kid. <laughs> he can't come detect it. Look at the size of it. It's absolutely massive. The, no, yeah. That's huge. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's a big bun, Simon. <laughs> How do you stay so, so slim? Uh, metal detecting does it. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, that's where we had lunch, under Simon's uh, love tree, his love token tree, as we're now calling it, and uh, we've jumped over that stream as you've just seen uh, Simon clamber down and get stuck in the mud. We'll come into the field next door, which is partly under crop, so we're just going round the edge of it, and we're heading into another field on the side of the hill, which has never been detected. This field that produced the Roman Ah, uh, it was just a little bit disappointing today. And I think part of the problem is, it's been ploughed since I was last in it. So that always seems to interfere with getting deeper targets. Well, that's my theory at least. So let's go and see if we can find some afternoon treasures. Three and a half to four hours to go. Well, if nothing else, at least it looks picturesque. So a brand new field, never been detected by me or as far as I'm aware and as far as the farmers aware anybody in existence so completely virgin field got ploughed a couple of weeks ago it's fairly firm and hopefully easy digging so 
We're surrounded by monuments, Iron Age, Bronze Age, Roman, Medieval. Surely there's got to be something good. Now let's go and find out. My first find, good find, off the new field. And it's a rarer two-holer. Two Normally it's four-holers. Part of a two-piece button. Probably would have been military. 1914-18 or 39-45, to 45, I'm guessing. Or thereabouts. It was just under the surface, an 86, a little flick of the foot, and out it pops, and I think, oh, it might be a token rather than a coin. So I'm going to have to clean this off camera in case it's got the name of the farm on it again, but I'll get back to you in a second. Oh, we've got another mystery coin. It's not a token, it is a coin. But it almost looks like it's got Chinese writing on it. Not really sure, forgive oh. my ignorance, but on the other side it clearly says 2-0 in the middle and it looks like it says Quang, K-W-A-N-G, Tung, T-U-N-G, and then I don't know if that says province or maybe even, is it province? Possibly province or maybe prince. And I think it says 20 possibly cents at the bottom. So it's a coin, I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe... Looks like in the, uh, Indonesian, yeah, or not, like, in, no, in, not Chinese. Yeah. No, no, like, um, uh, I agree. Uh, no. I think maybe Philippines. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. Malaysia, something like that. Uh, on the but other side, you you see there is... Like, uh, the, uh, tung, no. <laughs> yeah, it does. It says, that's <laughs> what I said, it says Quang Tung... I think it's Quang Tung Province is what it says. Maybe it was a king. So Quang Tung. No, well if it says province at the end I doubt it. So Well from that province. So forgive <laughs> forgive Simon and uh, forgive my ignorance. But uh, it's a coin and it's another bizarre one. How on earth does this get to a field in Persia? Interesting. Let me know in the comments below. Oh and date wise. Probably around about 1880, 1920 maybe I'm guessing. Might be on a roll here, having just had my, uh, well, Malaysian, Indonesian, Chinese coin. We've got another one. Is that a spendable? I think it is. Chinese. It's another coin. It's, uh, I think it's a 1P. I think. Oh, I just can't see anything on that. Oh no, there is. It's coming through there. You'll see the portcullis coming through. It's a spendable one pence of the late Queen Elizabeth II. But it's coin number three, so I can't complain. And that's two in two minutes, so maybe a change of field is all that we needed. I tell you what, they took their dental hygiene very serious around these parts. It's another Gibbs Dentifrice. I'm sure I'll regret it, but I'm going back to a live dig. A screaming 86-87, absolutely screaming and shallow. Such an easy field to dig, it really is, there's no or hardly any big stones and it's pretty easy going. Well, it looks like lead. Oh, there's an impression. Is it lead? Well, there's an impression. Is it maybe another button? It's not heavy enough for lead. No, not quite sure what it is. There's Simon in the background coming up with something interesting. He's been telling me that all day and he's found nothing. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's part of a button. Probably a hundred, a couple of hundred years old. Simon's got himself this wee thing here, which might be a commemorative medal. It looks silver in colour underneath, but it... It is, uh, I've not got a lot of water in my bottle, but... I have here more. Oh. And many silvers. <laughs> and golds. I should have refilled it before I came, but I forgot. Oh, that's better. I'll take Look over for this, you. This is a, a professional, this is this Spanish detective <laughs> spray. Right, turn, magic. Her, turn her over. I think it's a commemorative medallion. 
but it looks like it's got the name Alexandra. Alexand Alex yeah. Alexandrina, maybe? Victoria? Um, yeah. So we'll give it a wee clean up off camera. Not quite sure what we're going to do with it. It's looking in a bit pitted condition, but it's a thing, so we'll get back to you. Well, I thought my eyesight was bad, but I'm trying to explain to Simon there. Look, do you see the two heads? But he doesn't. Um, you can just see DWA up the top left, so it's going to be um, Edward and over here Alexandria. And I do believe that that is Dirty Bertie, who is at the front. You can just see his nose just above my thumb. And his wife, Alexandria or Alexandrina. I can't remember what her name was now. I think it was Alexandrina, maybe. Anyway, she was from, I think she was from. Uh, Denmark if I do remember and there's a date on the back at the bottom there I think it's 1902 1902 and then there's definitely the words to commemorate along the top there so to commemorate what we're not sure but clearly something that happened in 1902 involving Dirty Bertie and his bride Alexandrina maybe it was even their coronation but it's made of uh, an alloy. It's very, very light. Very light, yeah. But a very Look, interesting looks a, thing. Looks a feather. It looks a feather. <laughs> a metallic feather. It's a funny looking feather, Simon. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, well, it's a nice thing. We've had quite a few commemoratives out the fields. So that's another one for the collection. Well done, Simon. Okay, let's go. And there he is, doing his piece to camera with his lovely wee medallion that he's found. Hurrah! We've got what sounded like a bottle top, and then I thought it might have been a sheared bolt. And it's a coin, it's a penny. We're up, we've got a penny this time. As suspected, it is indeed Gorgeous George, George V. And uh, the date on the back is 1915, so during the Great War. And I've mentioned before how similar looking uh, Tsar Nicholas and George V were, but also Kaiser Wilhelm. I'll put a little picture up that shows you the three of them. Because they were all cousins. They were all uh, grandchildren of Queen Victoria. Um, and they were incredibly alike. I think they were all just about as inept as one another as well. So George V, he wasn't the, the brightest of kids. He was the spare. He was sent off uh, to the Naval Academy and he spent most of his early days travelling the world uh, by ship in the Navy. But he was recalled when his brother, uh, Albert Victor, died in uh, an influenza pandemic and that made him, instead of being the spare, it made him the heir. And his life very much changed after that. I think he only, as king, I think he only, I'm sure already, he only travelled outside the UK four times in his entire career as king. I think he went to, like, India, Belgium, France and Italy. And if I remember rightly, when he was in France, he fell off his horse and nearly killed himself. But uh, there you go. It's another coin. Coin number four. Fairly shallow, shallow target, should I say. Uh, like 98, 99. And have we got a spearhead? Or an axe head. It was big and green. It's there. Is that a bit of pipe? No, it's not a bit of pipe. It's solid. Wow. That's heavy. That is one solid piece of bronze. Or copper alloy. Wow, wow, wow. Unfortunately, it looks like it's got a machined end on it. It's got a little... Recess there in the end. Is it hollow? Nope, it's just a wee dimple. So that is a mightily big piece of bronzy copper, but it looks like it's got a machine end on a machined end on it here. That taper probably been done with a lathe. So I don't think it's massively old. But what is it? Has it broken off something there? But let me know in the comments below. That's gonna weigh my trousers down, I can tell you. I don't think this is anything particularly amazing or ancient. It's got a little pin at the end there. It looks like it's got a little dot decoration on it. But I know what it is, but I can't think what it is. You know, when you get those moments. 
sure I've found one of these before many times. Maybe part of a latch or a window or a door or something. But if you know, let me know because I'm just racking my brains trying to think what it is. We might have another wee ball, maybe, there. Put the detector over it and it's not metal, but it is a clay marble or, oop, focus. There we go, got there in the end. Um, it is a clay marble or clay stopper. It's a bit rough and ready in shape, but probably Victorian or maybe older, so 1800s, but uh, could be earlier. Simon in the distance, he's just a hundred yards away and he's just shouting he's got a coin, but I think I've outdone him. I think I've got black beauty. A really shallow hole, expected junk. And I think we've got a, a nearly legless horse just there. Definitely looks like a horse. Well, it could be a zebra, I suppose, but I think it's a horse. A lead horse. Some of the paint's still on it. Seem to be on a wee bit of a roll with kids' toys. Sounds like a half penny of George V for Simon. That's his first coin, although he did get that lovely big medallion, commemorative medallion, and there you go. A wee lead horse. So I don't know, maybe it would have had a rider. Um, kids' toy, probably part of a set. And date-wise, I don't know, early 1900s, 1900 through to... Maybe something 1930 or even 40. But that is a nice find. I love that. And there we are. A hair clasp this time. Or part of a hairbrush. But I think it's a clasp. Unfortunately not silver. Some sort of alloy or aluminium. Probably less than 100 years old. As well as being big on their uh, dentafrost or dentafreeze. They're pretty big on their moisturiser as well. Ponds. Got a little bit quiet for me. Um, that's a little fragment of a buckle. It's got some sort of fretwork um, decoration on it, but uh, well, who knows? Hundred, a couple of hundred years old, maybe slightly older. It's been a wee while since I've had one of these, but some of the other guys have had them. It's a post office bag seal. It's very distinctive because it's got the notches one, two, three uh, along it where they crimp it. And it's normally always got an associated depot directly below it. Starts with a P, possibly Perth. Seeing as where we are. Oh no, maybe not. Glasgow. Glasgow on that side. So why did I think that said Perth? Maybe it just says P-I. I don't think I've ever had one from Glasgow before. They're normally from Perth and Dundee and Angus and Forfar and... Places around where we detect, but this one clearly not. From Glasgow, where I was born. City of my birth. Glasgow. Um, so yeah, this is probably late 18, early 1900s. We've got a coin. Well, kind of. <laughs> it is a coin, believe it or not. I could just see the letter GE for George at the bottom left there. So it's a Georgian coin. First, second or third. It's a bit of an irregular shape and uh, quite thin in places. So I think it could be a George the First or a George the Second. But unfortunately, we've lost just over half of it. But still, it's a coin from the early to the middle of the 1700s. So have we got bottle top number 512 of the day or have we got a dandy button? Hmm. Don't think it's either. It's like a tag. Maybe even for a pet dog. It's very, very thin, so I don't know if I'm going to get anything off of this. Oh, it's maybe not. It's maybe an ear tag. It is. Different style for what we're used to. But it's an old circular ear tag. TSS. Nothing on that side that I can see, so... Probably to help you identify your cow. Or your sheep. From about 13 inches down, I think we've got our first bike bell in a while. Ugh. Well, it's been in the ground a wee while, hasn't it? Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's a copper alloy bike bell. Ding, ding. Just 10 feet away, on the surface, I've got another one. Smaller, 
maybe a lady's bicycle, who knows? Or someone who just liked a small bell. Um, maybe this is where they all stopped and had their lunch. Hopefully this is where they dropped their gold sovereigns. I doubt it if they could only afford a bicycle. I've got myself another part of a razor. You can see the handle has kind of got little lines on it just to help you grip it when it's wet. A men's razor, so I'm pretty certain because of that little thready bit on top. That's what my other piece was, although generally they're more like this design, or big long straight lines down the handle, but probably turn of, this, turn of the last century, early 1900s. So when they weren't brushing their teeth and moisturising their faces, they were shaving. Either that, or the municipal dump, the council, were spreading rubbish on the fields, which is what I suspect. I think I might have just hit a bit of silver. Possibly some sort of pendant. Now it was a 91-92, but I've just been getting plagued by aluminium again and bottle tops. And this has popped out. There is definitely writing on it. I've got some water in my... Ooh. Well, that is interesting. Oh, it's the alphabet. I think it's the alphabet. It is. It's the alphabet with some writing below it. What have we got on this side? Secret Service. <laughs> oh no, it's not real silver, is it? It's not. It's some. Is it a kid's? It's maybe a kid's to like toy pendant or something. Oh, I could have sworn that was silver. Even had the right readout for silver. Maybe it's some sort of alloy. Right, I'll clean this up. This looks very interesting. I'll get back to you in a second. Never ceases to amaze me the weird things that you can find in fields. Um, so you will see there it says Secret Service Badge and then at the bottom it says The Fifth Dagger. Let me get my zoom just a wee bit better. So, there you go. What do you make of that? And on the other side... KK Cole, I think that says at the top. K-K-C-O-L-E. Or is it KK Code? Well, what was the club called again? The Fifth Dagger. Well, no. So, I really don't know. It's the alphabet and then at the bottom it says something. And then it says The Wizard. So that is a mystery pendant. Unfortunately not silver, some sort of alloy. But I thought I was in with luck there. So the Fifth Dagger Secret Service Badge. I'm guessing probably early 1900s, 1930s, something like that. But let me know in the comments below. I love that. Nice we find. Hola, hola, hola. I have maybe... <laughs> Sorry, no, nothing. Just checking, <laughs> checking my sound. It's fine. <laughs> I have maybe, just maybe, got myself a coin. It was an absolute screamer. It was like a 90, 94, 95, and it's very fat. Now, I don't think that could be a coin. Possibly a weight. Possibly a weight, but just going to have to let it dry out and then get back to you. But I think that could be, I think that could be a little weight. Probably weighs about half an ounce or so, 10, 12, 15 grams at most, so somewhere between 10 and 15, but I'll let it dry out, we'll see if we can get any detail or decoration on it, uh, and uh, Mr. Simon standing next to me, he's already had a, a lead weight as well, which uh, is well worth having a look at, he'll have that in his video coming soon I'm sure, well in fact he'll probably post it before I've posted mine. <laughs> it's a mystery one, it definitely looks like a little weight. Um, there are numbers on it. 483. So who knows, maybe some sort of tally or token, or it just seems too big, too heavy for that. Imagine having a pocket full of these. So maybe some kind of weight. Purpose unknown. A wee military button. A wee dome, two-piecer. But unfortunately, the dome has been squashed. But undoubtedly, there would have been regimental insignia on there. I can see a little bit of banners going across. So it's a military badge, first or second world war. I'm not doing very well on live digs at the moment. Every single target that I've thought was a guaranteed good find has been junk. And I think every single target that I thought was junk has turned out to be a good find. But we've got another coin and I think we've got a beautiful little farthing. Honestly, farthings, I... 
just never used to find them. I used to find like one or one or two a year if I was lucky. Now I seem to be getting them every second dig. And I think it's probably just this detector is so good at finding small targets. I'm running on 24 kilohertz at the moment for anyone who understands how the, the DS2 works. Um, in the hope that I might get a little bit more depth. So far though, mostly small and shallowish targets. And that is George the Fifth. You know all about him. You must be fed up hearing about him. But a quarter of a penny, a farthing, and they phased these out. Ugh, can't actually remember when. Probably around about the Second World War, or the, sometime between the first and the second. Now, I think we'll struggle to get a date off this. Yeah, I can't see one. But as you know, it's going to be between 1910 and 1936. Lovely. I think that's coin number five for me. We've got about one hour, maybe one and a half hours of daylight at the most. And as you can see, uh, there he is, the big Spaniard. And we are going to have a wee, uh, a wee drink, grab all of our kit from the edge of the field, which we've left here. And we're going to make ourselves diagonally across the field, heading back towards the car. But that's probably going to take us an hour and an hour and a half, something like that. So we're in the witching hour almost, which last time is when we hit the good stuff. So fingers crossed, maybe. Oh, I think we've got a coin. I was going to say this one sounded pretty decent. 88 came through that. We should get an imprint off of this, surely. Don't call me surely. Um, no, it stuck to it. Well, definitely looks like a coin. So, uh, I'll give it the rubby dub and get back to you. I wasn't convinced I would get anything off this, but it is George the Sixth. So it's the son of George the Fifth, and uh, the grandson of Dirty Bertie. So uh, Elizabeth II's father married a woman of Scottish uh, ancestry, the Bowes Lions, Elizabeth Bowes Lion, and he was on the throne during the Second World War. Another one who should never have been king, but his brother abdicated, and uh, he ruled as George the Sixth. Well, it's another coin. 1991, and I think we might have our first Copper Georgian coin. Certainly a 1991 normally means Georgian, but you know what, to me it looks like a penny. So maybe I'm wrong, again. Um, right. It's going to be difficult with the light, but I'll give it a clean off camera and see if we can get some detail. I think I'm going to have to wait till I get home to get an ID off this one. Just not enough light and the camera just doesn't seem to work anywhere near as well as it should. But I think it's possibly a George V, which would put it sometime between 1910 and 1936. Literally right on the surface. I'm not even sure what it is. I can't even see it properly. Possibly some sort of pinhead. But we'll have a look at that when we get back home. Well, folks, another day, another detecting adventure. There he is, big Simon in the background. So, all in all, well, I've done, good day, yeah. I've done pretty well, you've done pretty well. So, yeah, we have, I think you only managed one coin, but you got uh, quite a few interesting little artifacts as did I, and uh, I think I maybe got seven coins, give or take. So uh, yet another XP Deus 2 spanking delivered to the Equinox 800. Yeah, it's always winning. Uh, I think, I think what, what is it they say, a bad workman always blames their tools. So in other words, it's, it's not the Equinox's fault. <laughs> well, so know. we've had fun. It's been a great day, a really uh, good day. Always nice to see Simon. So let's go and have a wee look at my best finds back at home with a cup of coffee. Hello everyone. I'm afraid yet again work has taken me away and as a result I've not been able to do the light box with the best of the finds. But don't worry, it will come soon because I've got to recap 
quite a number of fantastic items that I've had over the last few weeks. As ever, if you like what you see and you're not already subscribed, then please hit the button. And hopefully, I'll see you all on the next dig. So take care, and thanks as ever for watching.